Welcome to Crazy Hank TV. Today we're doing another episode of Game of Thrones. Uh, we're going to talk about the last of the Starks. And we have two guests tonight, two uh, experts. Today we have Axel. Axel, you like to... Yes. Hi. Thank you, Jack. I am honored to be here with a legendary podcaster such as yourself. <laughs> started back in the lost days. We're still doing it. So we've been down this road before. Uh, you can find me at Podcast Winterfell, podcastwinterfell.com. Just released our deep dive today. I was talking about it a little bit, and we, we also kind of went off and talked about how everybody's hating on the show because we love it. Yeah. We're loving this season, so I'm ready to talk about it. Awesome. And now we have Nick. Yeah. The other, the other guy. The other guy <laughs> from uh, J. Jack and Nick, Game of Thrones podcast, J. Jack and Nick. Nice, nice. You, you don't want to talk about the Ramblecast where you're the other guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Ramblecast, which is uh, with the uh, Crazy Hank story. If anyone <laughs> wants to know what happens to Crazy Hank when he, uh, he gets a little loose. Yeah, uh, uh, way too loose. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here to talk about Game of Thrones, not about my adventures <laughs> and, and trying to stay sober, whatever it was. Uh, but, uh, well, actually, you started it, so... You like the episode. You're, you're happy with the, how the season's going. Yes, I love this episode. I thought that it had a really nice balance. I thought that we had to have this part where we say goodbye to people in the beginning. I thought the whole shot of all those bodies and the bale and the logs or bales was amazing. Um, and then we had this whole feast where we got to see how things are settling back into place. Because let's not forget, immediately before the whole Night King and the White Walkers attacked, John had just told Danny that he was Aegon Targaryen. So right. we have to figure that out. We have to see what the fallout is. And I love the whole thing. I thought the Danny angle is perfect. I'm not worried about it. I think she's always struggled with power leading up to the battle with Euron and the dragon where I thought people are complaining and saying, why didn't she, why, why were they flying around? How didn't they know that Euron was there? Well, that's because Danny's arrogant. She always has to have the dragons out front. And here I am. Here's the dragons. And they knew she was going to be like that. So they took advantage of it and all the way up to Masande, who I'm sad to see go, but now Danny's all alone in the world. She's got nobody to talk to. Drag uh, uh, a Targaryen alone in the world. Is there anything so sad? Remember that Maester Aemon said that to John, and uh, I, I just love it. I love the direction it's going. And I can't wait to see what happens. I think it's going to be very hot. A lot of fire coming up this weekend. So, actually, are you a book reader? Did you read the books? I am not a book reader, but I have been podcasting about Game of Thrones since two thousand what eleven. Mm -hmm. And um, I have read Fire and Blood and the, um, what was it, uh, Fire and Ice, The World of Fire and Ice. Yeah, okay. And I've listened on and off, and I know the differences, but I'm not a book reader. Okay. Because I think I am someone who was, I didn't hate the episode, <laughs> but I'm, I'm a plot person. Mm -hmm. And... I, I enjoyed it, especially the beginning parts of it. Like you're saying, like, I thought the funeral and the and the dinner party was absolutely great. And then it slowly kind of started to fall apart, just plot wise, and like just re natural reasoning. So like, like you mentioned the dragons, for example, like that was one of those things I kind of agreed with. It's like she's has the point of view; she has air superiority. How do you not see a small armada of ships below you? That makes no sense. Why didn't you fly the dragon around the ships? There's a lot of things like that. It just, it, to me, it seemed too convenient for plot wise for them to say, oh, it's just to even the odds. Like we'll kill a dragon. And th that way the audience will think that when she finally faces Cersei, you know, the, it'll be even. But then there's also the, the the stupidity of even Euron in that same situation. It's like instead of pressing the attack or trying to blockade Dragonstone, what's he do? He goes back to King's Landing and allows Danny and her army to land and confront them in front of King's Landing, that to me also seemed not really logical. I mean, there's a lot of other things in the, in the episode that didn't make sense to me. But just... I, um, you know, I accept those criticisms. I'm not one that's hugely into, like, military strategy or anything. So I did think, why didn't she just fly around 
And when I rewatched, I was looking to see if the bolts were on the back of the ships too, headed the other way, which they were not. They were not. No. I also think this. And you can't just spin a ship around. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe Paw Patrol can though, Jack. Yeah, Paw Patrol, we, yes, we know Paw Patrol can. <laughs> Paw Patrol can. <laughs> they have tons of gadgets on Paw Patrol. Oh, they yeah. could do anything. If they hadn't just left Ghost uh, oh. up in the north, you know, the Paw yeah. Patrol. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Paw Patrol, go, go. Um, but this is what I think. I think that Danny and John are terrible military strategists. They've shown this time and time again. Mm -hmm. I think they're terrible. They're just not good. They're not Stannis. They're not Tywin. They're not Rob. Rob was great. They just don't have it. And I think that there's some things that happen in this show that people uh, find fault in that I think are purposeful that because for some reason, especially because this is a show about fantasy and dragons and they're almost like superheroes on this show. Everybody pretty much can like jump and do things and, and like do a sword except for Sam, like me, I probably couldn't even lift up a sword. <laughs> but um, I just, I really think that Danny is arrogant. I think she just marches in with her dragons. She doesn't even look down. I really think that's true. It's just the same way. Look what John did. He messed up the Battle of the Bastards. He had to run after Rickon, right? Mm -hmm. um, Danny, how many times has she just thought she could go and burn everybody? She's always trying to show a big, you know, I think I thought in that way they did that on purpose, right? Because if you watch it, they have this shot of Danny and, she, and they're they're playing the Jawadi music, which is amazing. Do, do, do. And then Danny's like, ah, oh, and you, she looks over and Ragel's flying up there, who, by the way, John had just said that he shouldn't be flying because he's tired. Mm -hmm. right? And then whoop, the bolt hits. Because I think Danny was in that moment. She was feeling her power, right? She was just like, look at me, I'm the dragon lady. So I understand complaints about plot points. And let, I mean, this is a fantasy show. It's not exact. There's dragons in it. There are some like superhero type elements the same plot uh, uh like failings you could find in like a marvel movie but um it didn't really that didn't really bother me because i just always think that they're very bad at this well my my issue with danny and the dragons was they already know you have them like you're saying she's arrogant yeah. why, why you're, you're there are they're already afraid of the dragons you don't need to intimidate them at this point they they know you have them yeah. So why are you leading the way with the dragons? And like, you know, we're saying you've how, like, really? Nick say, how did you not, how did you not look around? Cause she's up there floating around. I have dragons. I have dragons. I have, and yeah. I have one. So like I said, I've, I've been on team Sansa for a while and, and Nick hates me for it. No, but, but, I was but, ask but, about that. But, but who said, let's let the troops heal a little bit. Let's let them recover from this horrible, horrible battle. They just had where even gray worm was, was, was probably peeing his pants or whatever, you know, crap in his pants because of, of, I mean, he should never shows any fear at all was showing fear with, you know, the white walkers. I mean, it just, I, so I'm on team Sansa right now. Yeah. I, I, uh, Nick, were, were you going to ask me if I'm, uh, into, if I'm team Sansa too? Yeah. I saw the thumbs up. So I, assumed, uh, <laughs> I am, I am, I am team Sansa all the way a fellow ginger. <laughs> and um, you know she could be my sister from another mother but um i i think she's great i think uh, i call her sensible sansa she is thinking about the people she's thinking about the future i thought it, she didn't tell somebody i was saying on our podcast today instead of just telling Tyrion, she should have gathered everybody in winterfell into that room that they always that liana uh, mormon r.i.p was always like being so strong in, and she should have said, guess what, everybody? John Zagard and Targaryen, and just laid it all out. I think she didn't tell enough people hmm. because it's lies that got them into this in the first place. It's hiding the truth that got them into this in the first place. It's his not really knowing the true history that got them into this. So I'm always in favor of breaking these oaths, starting new traditions, and kind of like, just doing it. And I think that's what Sands is doing. Well, like you and Jack are on the optimistic side. And as a Jay likes to uh, point out, I'm, I'm a contrarian. 
Okay. <laughs> so, uh, that's okay. And so to me, I'm looking at the character motivations and, and the histories of the characters. And to me, especially in this last season, they have really starting to do a mirroring of, of, of a lot of characters. Cause like you can do a simple one such as, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Gendry, who's a Baratheon, who's in love with a Stark, who's not in love with him, you know, and like, just like his dad was in love with a Stark who wasn't in love with him. There's a lot of it going on. And Sansa to me, is just like Cersei in that she was a, a woman in a man's world. It was not taken seriously and she would have done anything to be queen. That's her first motivation in season one, season two. And then you look at who her influences are. It's Cersei, it's Littlefinger and it's Ramsey. Three really evil manipulative people. And Jack's already heard all this, but <laughs> you, you, but, and yeah, you can look at her actions from an optimistic point of view, but I also see it as in, you know, she didn't tell John about anything about the veil or Littlefinger in season six. She undermined John entirely in season seven when everyone was like wanting him to be the new king of the north. She was like, "What? What can he do?" You know, she because she wants to be taken seriously, which I get. And in this season, when John finally tells her the secret, she ten, within ten minutes, instead of doing what she, I agree with, she should have told the world. But she didn't. She told Tyrion and, and put a seed of doubt within his head to manipulate him. And so I can easily see her being just like Littlefinger but, uh, to where something from this action gets Jon and, and Danny killed. And it, and, it, and it could end up with her being on the throne, but it's because she's doing, she's doing it for those reasons. And so that's I'm looking at it from an evil point yeah, of view. No, I, 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 see, I see where you're coming from. And I don't disagree about the Tyrion part. Um, I think that that was a mistake to, to be the one person you tell Tyrion. But a lot of what happens in this show is based more so on the people's personal relationships than the strategy, right? We see that time and time again. And um, Sansa... Probably shouldn't have told Tyrion. You're right when she when she um, kind of disrespected John in front of everyone, you know, in the beginning. But I did a rewatch before this season, and one of the things I wanted to do was try to investigate my own thoughts on Sansa because I was never a fan of hers, you know. Mm -hmm. Just because I don't, um, it, it's you know, I, I don't really have a lot in common with a young girl of 13 who wants to be a princess. So it was always hard for me to kind of identify with her. But what I saw is that she had been through so much and it wasn't until she stepped foot in Winterfell when Ramsey, you know, after one, one went down and all that, that she, for the first time in her life could speak her mind all that time with little finger, all the time before that she was controlled and right. she was controlled by her own ideals of tradition of who she should be in this society and i think sansa is breaking that down now she sees what do these oaths get us what do these promises get us what does this system get us and in my mind i think sansa is more apt to break the wheel than daenerys would ever be but she's got to learn more nick so i don't disagree with you i mean one of the things i constantly remind myself is that Sans is like 20, mm -hmm. right? Ari is like 18. John and Danny are like 24, right? Because they were 17. John was 17 when the show started because all they did is talk about 17 years ago. And mm -hmm. that's when Ned brought John, the end of the war. That's when he was born. So that's something I remind myself. You're talking about plot and things. I think about overall, they're still learning. When we met Ned, he was in his 40s. When we met Tywin, he was in his fifties or sixties, you know, Cersei and, 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 uh, and Jamie are like in their thirties or forties, you know, maybe thirties. So she's made mistakes, but this show is a lot about the future. Do you think Sansa, I have a question. Do you think Sansa would have been more, would have backed John more if he would have said and not have gone with the uh, Danny? Where he bend the knee and all this other because she, she she was never she wasn't happy about that. Yeah, I do because she doesn't tr she doesn't trust Danny number one, 
and she doesn't think she's I don't obviously doesn't respect her. So if John said, I want the throne, she's not my queen, would Sansa say, Okay, I will back you? Hmm. I don't know. What do you think, Nick? What was the question? <laughs> well, I'm saying, I'm saying because Sansa, Sansa is, is, like you said, is trying to go around and, and manipulate all this different stuff. Right. If John has said, okay, I'm not going to back Danny. I'm not bending the knee. Mm-hmm. I want the throne. Right. Would Sansa have said, okay, I will help you get there? Hmm. Good question. Because she doesn't respect, we, we've seen it. She doesn't respect Danny. She, she, I think she makes still it difficult for her all the time. Well, if if John didn't have his dying loyalty to Danny, he might have actually sided with Sansa and saying, "Okay, we're going to wait." Right. I could see him doing that. Well, that was the right move. Yeah. Here's another question: um, With Arya going south, we all assume that she's going to go fulfill her list, but who's to say that she might not? She might be going down there to kill Danny. That's an interesting point. You know, there was a, a, the, a, a someone had a theory that um, Cersei hired a face the faceless men mm-hmm. take out Danny, and somehow the contract got to Arya or something. I was like, I don't know, but I don't know if that could. I don't know if she's really still in contact, but um, you know what? Maybe she's gonna want to take out both, or just be there to do what she needs to be done when the battle's over. Mm-hmm. That's the thing I think about Arya. I think she might be pulling a Cersei here, like how and which is really a Littlefinger, right? When Littlefinger said, "Let Stannis and the Boltons fight it out, and we'll pick off who's left." Right. right. Cersei did the same thing. Let the Northerners and the White Walkers fight it out, and we'll pick off who's left. You know, they. I don't. You know, I don't think she thought they were going to try to come down and march on her like they're doing, which I don't think is a good idea to begin with anyway. But, um. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Arya is there to kind of see. Maybe Danny takes out Cersei, and then Arya is there to take out Danny, or, t- or you know what I mean. Or Cersei wins, and Arya. But man, you think, you think maybe Arya has already had it worked out with Sansa that this is supposed to happen? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like they probably yeah. realized that John was not gonna. It's better to keep things from John. They went, okay, let's talk off screen, you know, and say, okay, yeah, let's let's do this. Hey, Nick, I mean, based on what happened, I'm sorry, Jack, but based on what happened last season when they had their secrets going on with Littlefinger, right? I like that idea. Yeah. Now we've crapped on John, but he did build build a coalition, though. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing he's done right. <laughs> that's true. I give I give Davos credit for that. <laughs> uh, that's my pick. You want to know something? That's my dark horse pick. Everybody says Tyrion should sit on the Iron Throne, which I think would be a terrible idea. All these other people, to me, Davos is the man. He's definitely the most honorable of them all and honest. Yeah. I, and he, he does, needs to be done. Mm-hmm. Right? I, like, go ahead, Jack. I believe that Sansa and Tyrion are going to marry and share the throne. Uh, I, I like that idea. I'm just going with it. Nick hates it, but I'm going with it. <laughs> I like it. Hey, you know what? Ken, who is a, a frequent guest this season, used to have a podcast called Cripples, Bastards, and Broken Things. Oh, yeah, I know that one. Yeah, yeah he's a huge Sansa fan, and that's he keeps on sending me drawings that people do on the internet of Sansa and Tyrion getting married. <laughs> I, like, look down at my phone, and he's texting me all these, like, little photos that are, like, paintings of Sansa and Tyrion holding hands. Technically, aren't they still, what, shouldn't they still be married? Yeah, they never got divorced or annulled. I mean, I know she married Ramsey, Ramsey, but uh. well, you could say that the Lannister that you know, who I guess at that time Tommen was king, right? Right. Yeah. Tommen could have done something to make it happen, and we don't know about it. You know what I mean? But it's possible that they Cause, still cause, are married because they definitely care for each other. Yeah, they do, and she would be good for him because yeah. I, hey, that's a guy who's been messing up a lot. Tyrion, how many yeah. times has he messed up? A lot. You know, and and he's drinking a lot, and so oh, he's always he's always drank a lot. Yeah, well, he could. You know what he did? He he was calming down a little, right? Since he met Danny, since he did that whole drunk, uh, what was like, um, like a bu- a pub crawl through Essos with Varys, mm-hmm. right, and got kidnapped. But um, I do want to say, Jack, that 
I agree with you about John. He is a coalition builder, and I love John as a character. I just think that he's not a general. No, he's not. He's he's a fighter. Yeah, he's yeah. someone you. He's someone you. If you're going to battle, you want John by your side. Yeah. Not not Sam. But you want <laughs> you want John by your side. So, but like I said, I agree. He's not. He's 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 not. He's not a. He's not a leader. Of, you know, in that way. Yeah. I don't know. But do you think Tyr Tyrion's problem? I think Tyrion's problem maybe is you saw it in the scene where he was talking with Cersei, and like pleading with her, "Look, come on, you know you're not that bad a person." That maybe it's a family thing that he's just torn between yeah. Danny, and he's he's kind of losing faith in Danny, and you know he has Sansa on this side, and he has his sister, his his family, it's blood. That he doesn't he doesn't want to see her die. Plus, that she's pregnant. Oh. Oh, you mean Cersei? Cer what did I say? Sansa? Yeah. Cersei? No, no. I was thinking about that. Well, I was just thinking because so many people are theorizing that Danny's going to be pregnant before mm -hmm. the end of the season. Right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, Tyrion, I think you're right, Jack. Hey, we find this in life. Sometimes the things that we're always talking about that we hate, we hate, we hate, we're secretly attracted to right. or secretly desire. And Tyrion, even though he said and killed his own dad and hates his family and hates the Lannisters, what did he really want? He just wanted them to love him right. and mm -hmm. accept him. Accept him, yeah. So in the end, he doesn't want his brother and sister to die. He really wants to love them. He really wants everything to be okay. So I think Danny is right. He's blinded by his family. Right. I agree with her on that. Yeah. Danny said something smart. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Something we can all agree with. Yeah, going to that scene, uh, just plot little plot things that you know I noticed when watching the episode. So you, it, that that final scene also made zero sense to me from a logical point of view. I, I pointed out some of these on our podcast. Um, so Quiburns outside the gates, and so when they kill Masandi. like did you see him just kind of sneakily back in the gate? Like you're like, well, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that didn't happen. And also I thought it was really dumb for her to kill Masande. It's like, that's her one bargaining chip. You know, uh, Cersei is like, I have your, you know, well, I don't it, think she cares. Though. She doesn't care, but it still, it, it doesn't make sense to do it. It really, I mean, what, what are you really proving? You know? but, but that's what I'm trying to say, Nick, you're applying a logic yeah. to people. And honest, this is something I find and I'm not, I don't want to tear down. Um, your contrarianism, but <laughs> or, or just being critical, which is cool. And this is what we do. We podcast. Yeah. But I think often in television, we see characters that act. We always say things like they have to earn something or they have to act according to their character or this was not in character. How often do your friends act in character? How often do you act in character? People, I, I have no friends. So. I just, I just have Jack. <laughs> I just mean that people are hypocritical. So I actually enjoy it in a television show when a person just does something, you know. So Cersei is in a mode of just doing stuff. She gets a feeling and she does it. You know what I mean? I think she's a little bit past the negotiating and. She really just wanted, I think as soon as she got Masande, she was like, oh, great. I can kill her in front of Danny. Mm. Now, do you think she did it more for Danny or more for her brother? Maybe both. I, I think I think it was a giant F you to her brother when he was saying, "This is you're not evil. You're not this. You're not that. And she's like going, screw you. I am. I want, I want them to think that. I want them to be afraid of what's, because you know you have a very saying, you can't go, you're going to kill thousands of thousands of innocent people to, to get the throne. And of course he doesn't want that. No. So I, I think Cersei wanted that. I think she wanted her brother. I, I, I think it was more an F you to her brother. That's an interesting point, Jack. And that makes it kind of, um, Nick, you were talking about mirrors to the, the other generation, but there's mirrors within our current generation. And if you think about the conversation that Jamie had with Brienne, when he said everything for Cersei, everything for Cersei, you know, she's, I'm like her. I'm a, ter I'm a bad person. Right. What happens at the end of the episode? Cersei done cut off Masande's head. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like proving that Jamie was right. And also my, I mean, I love uh, Nicholas Coster Waldo. I think Jamie is a great character, but that dude's a scumbag. I am not, <laughs> I am no fan of his and I do not think he has been redeemed no. in any way. So, you know, but, but we want, we wanted to like him because yes. he, he, he had started, he, there's a glimmer of hope there, yes. yeah. but he, but he said that episode, I'm bad. Yeah. You need to, you need to just get away. From, I'm bad. I'm, I'm bad news. I, cause he's, he's controlled by his sister. Yeah. Cersei controls him. And he goes, I pushed a kid out of a window and I, you know, this long list <laughs> of things he did for his sister. He's addicted to her. He's yeah. Addicted he to is. his sister. Yeah. Oh, he can't get enough of that Cersei. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you, um, because there was some consternation on the interwebs that some people saw that conversation with Brienne and Jamie as Jamie saying to Brienne, I got to go back to her. I love her. I, I, I got to go low. I got to go be with her. Did you, did, Jack, did you think he was going to kill her or go be with her? Yeah, I, 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 I think it's more, he wanted to die with her. Oh, that's interesting. That That's what I, you know, more I thought about it. I, I thought maybe cause I'm, I'm on the kind of thing where people, the theory out there for the longest time was he was going to kill her. Right. Right. That's the, but I think that he's, I think they're going to end up dying together. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see it as, and I love her. I have to go back to her. I think it's just like Tyrion, like what you're saying about Tyrion, is that Jamie has been trying since he lost his hand to do the right thing. Right. And, um, but I think it's another one of those points for me about being not really liking Sansa too much, is that when <laughs> the news comes back that the dragon is dead and then they lost half the fleet, the look that she gives Jamie is this little evil smirk. Of saying, you know, like I always wanted to be there when your sister died. Looks like I'll miss it, you know. And she's doing it to almost to goad him into to doing something. And I think that really hit home to him is that even though I've turned against my sister, I don't want her to die. Mm -hmm. And he's going down there, I think, with the intent to save her. Right. But I think in the end, I think Jack's right that they'll both die in in the in the process. Wow. Yeah, see, I just kind of took it that he was, I wasn't quite sure, but it was almost like kind of, I think you said, Jack, like he just needs to be with her. You know what right. I mean? Like whether it's, whether he ends up killing her. Well, they're twins, so they have that bond. Yeah, they came in together. They're going to go out together. I like And, and they have another bond, but you know, it's. it's yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, that's a lot. <laughs> hey, there was, uh, I had a theory today I want to throw at you. Hmm? Because I know now, Nick, you're a, are you a book reader? I am. Yeah. Okay, so it's not in the show. I know, but the Valencar prophecy, mm -hmm. which would they? I mean, not it's not in the show, but they they cut it out there. But I know in the book, it's well, it, half of it is in the beginning of season five. Right. Yes. So they include they include the the younger blonde woman and the mm -hmm. kids, but they cut right. out the brother. Right. Was it younger brother or younger? Blonde? It's younger brother. Okay. So we were, I, I was thinking maybe Arya, maybe the hound and the mountain have Clegane bowl. Mm -hmm. One of them dies. Arya takes their face and kills Cersei because I'm on this tip that a lot of people think Arya is going to kill Cersei, but I think they have a, they have a, a unique opportunity to give us like a lost style double whammy Yeah, where we find out that not only was it not the person we thought that killed Cersei, it was Arya, but then when she takes the face off, we're like, oh no, that means that person's dead. So it's like a double death. Like we don't see, like the Clegane Bowl starts and then it stops. And then like, you know, the mountain walks in, right? And then Cersei's like, you defeated him. And then the mountain cuts off Cersei's head and then turn around and off comes the helmet and it's Arya. Can you imagine though the the fan backlash of that though? Because the mountain is so big, you know, and like, now how did that work? I know it's magic, but still, it's like <laughs> hey, it happened in Walder Frey, right? Right. She, she she kind of like all of a sudden, like it was like you know, what was that? Remember Jack? You remember when Tim Conway did the little oh yes doll? yeah and like all the, it was like a big head, but the little body is like right. that happened with Walder Frey. All of a sudden, she was like little again. Right. And, um, I thought that might be fun. Uh, to see, but I don't know. I like that idea, Jack, that Jamie and, and Cersei 
die together. I kind of feel like Cersei is going to go mad queen, mad king at the end. And I think that they're, they've, they used the wildfire once, they used it twice. I think they got to use it a third time. And I think she might just take out King's Landing. But weren't you saying, Nick, that it was on our podcast, you said it was hidden throughout the... Uh... Yeah, they. you're right. Nick knows. Mm -hmm. It's not... And they. And in the show, they said it too. They yeah. said it's in the... And Jamie actually said it. Jamie, when he was in the bathtub with Brienne, he said he put the wildfire everywhere. It was beneath the city. It was beneath the houses everywhere, right? Right. So I Maybe think... Maybe that's what Varys is worried about because he said yeah. you send the dragon in, torch that stuff. Good yeah. point. He would know that too, wouldn't he, Jack? He, would. he was there. Yeah. He was there with them. Everybody forgets that. He was there with the Mad King. Good stuff. And maybe he doesn't want to tell Danny this because, you know, obviously if that just gives her an easy boom, torch the torch King's Landing. Yeah, good point. Good point. You think, do you all think that that last conversation that happened with Varys and Tyrion, that Varys is going to try to take Danny out? Or is already trying because it seemed to me like he was saying he was going to have to kill her to get her out of the way. I think Tyrion kills Varys. Oh, that's what he thought. He thought that Tyrion was going to stop it. What do you think, Nick? It's very possible. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like a hundred percent sure that Varys is going to die. Yeah. Um, Melisandre she, said so. She said so exactly. Um, I still have some hope for Varys and that he won't be a villain. Because I do believe he serves the realm, but I, you've probably never heard this. But like my theory from ten years ago, and I even asked George R. R. Martin about it. Like okay. I've always believed Varys was a Blackfire, which is a bastard line of the Targaryens. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know about the rebel, the Blackfire Rebellion. Blackfire Rebellion. Yeah, and I because he's from Essos, you know, and you learn from Melisandre that you know uh, that a wizard took his genitals because they wanted. You know, and he has royal blood, so it makes total sense that he's that way. He shaves his head because he has a silver really hair, and he, but he's doing that. His motivation is the realm, but he he wants the Targaryens on the throne, but you know, but he he wants the best one for the the role. So I, it doesn't surprise me that he would betray Danny in in favor of John. He just wants the right thing. That's it. He has talked about the Targaryen restoration before, right. and don't forget he gave her the eggs. He did, yeah, yeah, he did. That's right. That's right. So I mean I, I think he will redeem himself maybe in this coming episode because um, I think that he is actually in control in charge of the Golden Company that he probably hired them and they just used the Greyjoys to get the army across the Narrow Sea and then he'll be the person that actually owns their contract and then like, he'll flip the army to against Cersei. Uh, but I think in the in the last episode when the, all the cards are finally on the table, like he'll die. Mm -hmm. That's but, pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I'd like to be proven once right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're going to get into the Blackfire stuff with um, in the show. You know, no. they allude to it in some way by him saying, like, we're related distantly, you know, and then the fans will get excited. But right. I like that idea. Yeah, Varys is an interesting cat, man. I've always loved that character. I always support the bald guys, so <laughs> myself. <laughs> Gotta support the brothers. So you're a Targaryen, Jack. <laughs> yeah, sure I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought this was interesting. I, I I learned some stuff. It was nice. Me too. Thank you very much. Oh, we good? We done? We're out. Well, unless you guys want unless you guys have something else you want to talk about. I got I probably gotta go check on the kitties in the bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> might, be, might be a good thing. But anyway, uh, Axel, give us your information again. Yes, um, you all can find me at podcastwinterfell.com, dvrpodcast.com. We're going to be covering Westworld. Actually, after Game of Thrones, I'm going to try to cover Big Little Lies. I'm actually I'm looking for someone to cover it with me. I'm looking for a, a female that's interested in that because it is a show about women, and I think that perspective is probably a good idea. But I love the show. We have a few, on our net, a few uh, podcasts on our network that are female that do watch it. See, hey, if if any of them are interested in t one episode a week, that's all I'm doing. No feedback, in initial reaction, none of that stuff. Just one episode a week, I think on Wednesday, I'll drop it and just cover Big Little Lies. That's going to be a lot of fun. And that'll I'll, be on another I'll, podcast, Daily DVR. Check it out. I'll let them know. That'd be awesome. 
And Nick, where can we find you? You can find me on the Ramblecast. <laughs> Owen and Brews Barbecue, which is a Star Wars podcast. And, that, I, that I've never been on. Yeah. And uh, is that it? Am I on another one? Yeah. On Game, 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 Game of Thrones with Jay Jack and Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, this is great. I, I, I would like to have you all on uh, Winterfell sometime. We yeah. could talk more about it. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. I would love it. This was great. I Like I said, I learned a lot. And, I'm, and that's always a good thing when you're on a podcast or just chatting that you learn something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's all we got. We're out of here. See you. Bye.